Oh, fucking hell, do I dare do this video? <laughs> Get ready for the comments. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. And there is a... Um, I want to do this video about uh, the difference, with how we've progressed from steam engines to internal combustion engines. It's going to be part one. We're going to talk a lot about these things because I find it really interesting. So you fuckers will. Um, <laughs> but... Um, Someone did send me a message saying, you know, why did they go, you know, archaic stuff like steam and all the rest of it? Well, you, you, if you're watching this video right now, predominantly the electricity that is used to allow you to view this video is still a steam system. And how did we progress from steam to internal combustion? Someone did ask, why didn't they just work out internal combustion in the first place? Right then, so what we have with steam and other systems, other mechanical systems and stuff, um, is what we call the working fluid. Let me write that one down. So the working fluid is a fluid that does the work. And nothing as much has changed about this. An example of a working fluid is hydraulic lines with your brake lines. So your brake fluid is the working fluid. It is something that transmits the force from you, you pulling your brake lever down to your calipers, um, you know, to push your pistons out. So your working fluid is your brake fluid. With steam engines, basically what you had is you had a fire in a coal box. You had a boiler, which is loads and loads of tubes that go through your main boiler. And then basically you, you pipe some of this off and you push this into a cylinder that has a piston in it. A lot of them were dual acting, so they push both ways. And then you put this on a crank and so on to your wheels. On a steam engine, it's quite cool because you can see all of it. It's all literally on the outside. And in this case, water is your working fluid. You boil that water and then it expands. And when you dump it into a cylinder, it expands out. It applies a pressure pushes a piston, you've got linear motion and you can convert that into rotational motion. Absolutely wonderful and fantastic. And the, there's some problems with this system though. The problems with this system are the when you condense that water back down, now you've got water in a cylinder, that's a problem, you kind of want to get rid of that because then it'll hydrolock, stuff like that. But stepping away from that, let's just look at um, thermal considerations is that your heat from burning coal in this respect from burning coal heats up everything <laughs> it heats up the furnace itself it heats up the entire back end of the train it heats up the air around it it heats up the boiler it heats up all the tubes it heats up the water but you are losing loads of heat fucking everywhere absolutely everywhere so it's thermal efficiency is crap you're heating up all these pipes like so and then obviously you're heating up things inside the cylinder but then saying that that's where we want our expansion all is good and gravy apart from the fact that it's really badly inefficient stuff like that and then obviously they just thought to themselves well why don't we just can't we just stick this the, have the heat source internally one of the big problems was is no one knew, knew, knew what fuel to use. Kerosene was used a lot in lamps and stuff like that. Petrol was octane, iso-octane, was pretty much a waste product. And one, some of the first ever internal combustion engines actually tried to use coal dust. <laughs> Very finely ground dust. And it will ignite and it will burn. The problem with it is, is the soot concentration. There is a lot of loose carbon in coal and that suck con concentration used to basically just block up your engine in no time all your valves everything it used to basically just fill with soot so what we required was is a fuel that will combust and basically turn to a gas so with our petrol engine or diesel um our working fluid is not air air is an oxidizer fuel is a fuel in internal combustion engines, because that combustion is internal, that's what it meant. With steam engines, it was external to the cylinder. So in other words, for a steam engine, you have a cylinder and a piston, right, with a rod on it and a fly, you know, flywheel and your wheel and all the rest of it, your crank and all the rest of it, and you'd actually you'd have another crank arm off this, 
with some linear bearings and all that kind of shite. But anyway, when you have this system, this is the engine, right? That section is the engine. The boiler and furnace is the boiler and the furnace. This is the engine. This is where some process turns into mechanical motion, right? Basically, the exchange of going from a high temperature to a low temperature, this is all thermodynamic stuff. This is converting that reduction in temperature from a high state to a low state into work, into motion that we want. So in a sense, this is the engine. But your combustion over here in your firebox with your boiler and all the rest of it is external to the engine. Then we have petroleum and diesel and other processes like this, depending on what fuel you use, are internal combustion engines. The combustion is internal or in the engine. So that's where internal combustion comes from. Some people might not even know that. They just might just take internal combustion as a... Yeah, mines. Um, <laughs> what can you do, eh? Um, so that's where... Inter it's not just a combustion engine, it's an internal combustion engine because there are external combustion engines. I think that's the thing that a few people might not know is that steam engines are external combustion engines. Any road. The working fluid of a petrol engine is your exhaust gases. That is your working fluid. Weirdly enough, it is not air. That's just an oxidizer. Now, your exhaust gases are components of both your fuel and your air after a combustion reaction. But basically, it's your exhaust gases. You get a flash. You know, you get combustion. Flame front burns through. The pressures rise due to the temperature rising. Dave Macaroni's going to have a right fucking shit state with this video. And it is basically that expansion of the gases that pushes down your piston. And the source of that is the combustion, which is the heat process. There we go. I'll shut Dave up. Um, so basically your exhaust gases, in a sense, are basically just the combustion gases. But your exhaust gases are the ones that do the work. And that's why a turbo works, because you can use the exhaust gases from that to basically drive a turbo, to generate power, to, you know, basically do anything you want to do. Um, turbo shaft engines that are fixed to helicopters and stuff like that, like the Apache was some I used to fuck around with. Um, then turbo shaft engines are basically, it's all just trying to extract energy from the turbine blades. The exhaust is pretty much weak as fuck, by, I say weak, relatively <laughs> for a, a jet engine um, basically they're trying to extract as much shaft horsepower out of those engines hence why they're called turbo shaft it's a turbine and it's a shaft driven system instead of being a turbo jet and using the jet propulsion to well as propulsion uh, using a high velocity jet uh, to create thrust which is basically chucking out mass that way so you go that way newton thank you very much and um <laughs> So yeah, the, the, they basically didn't know what fuels to use and they, what they required was a very clean burning fuel. And what we mean by clean burning is it's easy to evacuate it. So coal dust was out and eventually kerosene's, petrols, stuff like that were used instead. And this gets me onto my bugbear. And this is the, this is the dodgy bit. Play the clip. Now it's easier to wrap your head around if you think of all engines, even turbine engines, as an air pump. And occasionally we have an explosion in there to get power out of or a continuous explosion in the way of a, a turbine. But this is an air pump. So, <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm going to get so I'm going to get it right in the neck. I hear a lot of the time, someone sent me a message the other day saying this AV said it in his two-stroke video. Um... He said, it's basically an air pump, and I hate hearing that. I hate hearing that. Saying an internal combustion engine is an air pump is like saying, well, a motor is a generator. Well, no, they're not. That's why we have motors, and that's why we have generators. Now, this is semantics, and this is me being a right fussy bastard, but I love engines, so I'm allowed this. <laughs> The diff, there's a difference between an air pump. You might look at your uh, compressor. You might have a compressor at home. I've got one stuffed, well, two stuffed in the back of there. And you might say, it's got exactly the same things, Matt. It's got a crank, 
conrod, piston, rings, reed valves, cylinder, a cap, a head, so on and so forth. It's an air pump. It's not an air pump. Now, some people might ask, well, let's just draw the differences. So you might have exactly what I just described, a crank with a um, conrod and all the rest of it. You might have some reed valves. You can have poppet valves, depending on how good the compressor is, so on and so forth. And then you'll have an engine an internal combustion engine and you might look at them and go well hang about they're exactly the same fucking thing they're not and the reason why they're not is because if we say this is the air pump and this is an internal combustion engine it's actually not the combustion bit that really it does matter but it's not the fact that there's bang 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 bangs going on in here it's the fact of how the systems work just from a basic engineering perspective air pumps have to be driven right they have to be driven so you have a motor or something like that you can have a water wheel if you really want you have a motor that inputs energy into the crank right this then shifts the conrod on the piston to then draw in and pump out air this is a pump you have to put energy into the system to basically get whatever work you want to do so this is a pump. All is good. This, on the other hand, is not a pump because we put our uh, fuel and air inside there and we are basically extracting energy out, right? That is the difference. Now, I understand what he means. I understand what people say because it is basically an air pump. But then saying that there are a lot of types of air pumps even like vacuum pumps you can have a scroll one you can have um, a turbo uh, uh, an impeller driven one there's loads of different types of pumps you can have you know you can have a roots blower type pump stuff like this but this is a pump where you have to put work in to do something where this is we put fuel in and we extract work out of it you know we, we basically it's the in and the out in a sense now you might say that this is like a ladder a ladder can go up or a ladder can go down yes but a ladder is a ladder regardless of which orientation you're going in with this this is what matters this is the difference and if you're trying to explain exactly what an engine is it's fine to say this is like an air pump but like i say, that's like saying the difference between a generator and a motor and the exact same thing happens with a generator and a motor with a motor you have to put basically energy in you know through the the flow of electrons you are transferring energy from a storage device or whatever into that system to make a motor uh, and obviously you need batteries and you will deplete those batteries you will f deplete your fuel storage system or your energy storage system over time where with these things um you know it's the opposite way around it's a bit like saying a microphone and a speaker are the same thing they both have voice coils depending on what kind of microphone it is or speaker but they basically both have voice coils but with speakers you put energy in and it makes sounds with a microphone it vibrates a diaphragm which then you know you have a, a voice coil where you pick up that vibration it's an input and an output device and i understand what people mean when they say it is an air pump but it's not as well from a fundamental point of view you know am i nitpicking yes do i really care about this stuff yes so you know it's like saying it's heat that drives an engine not pressure you know it's that kind of thing the reason why that matters and the reason why dave macaroni is shit in his pants is because um when you look at it fundamentally if you wanted to increase the power one way to do is if you had really low shit combustion or you use a better fuel a fuel that basically reaches higher temperatures if you put nitrous or a higher concentration of oxygen just say you had an oxygen bottle feeding your engine instead of relying on atmospheric like the compressed air supercharger if you're using oxygen they're using air but you know you can go higher pressures and stuff like that the pressure going into the engine has got nothing to do with the outgoing pressure 
you know, stuff like that. Yes, if you have a higher pressure gas, but if you chill it down, the pressure drops and you'd still, you'd actually get higher densities, so you get more power out of it. Stuff like that. So, um, because pressure at the same temperature and densities are related, then you think, well, a turbocharger or supercharger is putting more pressure in, so it's pressure that causes you know, your engine to do more things. And when you're trying to make these engines or improve engines and stuff like that, understanding the fundamental principles are what matter. This is a semantics thing. It's in a brief explanation of how these things work. I get that. I just wanted to make it quite clear there is a difference. So with this system at an air pump, your working fluid is the air, the compressed air, that drives your tools. It's not what drives the engine. It's got nothing to do with it. This is a pump. Um, so in other words, the, the, the working, not fluid, but where this thing gets its energy from is from your power supply or a battery or whatever. You are putting electricity in, or even like a water wheel or something like that, you're putting torque in and you know it's just a transfer of torque. You could even drive this hydraulically you know what I mean? So your working fluid in that sense would be the hydraulic fluid. It'd be pretty messy and horrible, but <laughs> with this, it's the other way around. Um, I'm probably going to take a lot of stick for this, but it's the fundamental principles of these things. There is a big difference. Not mechanically, there isn't really any difference, but there's a fundamental difference between an air pump and an engine. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.